the ship's episode here on Cobra TV. Today I'm here with Bookshelf Gaming and we're going to talk about the ships, uh, spent a whole video just going over everything we know about the ships or most of the things we know about the ships. I don't want to really drive down too much of the info that has been, you know, talked about so much and we already, we knew, so we're not going to go back on information, too much information about uh, things we knew a year ago. If you guys are interested in some pretty funny Let's Plays. Check that link down below. Bookshelf Gaming uh, does Let's Plays, and they are pretty funny. And he plays the strangest games, the strangest ones. Um, But check it out. It's really funny. And in the last episode that we did, I was a little confused on how you can name the ship that you find, and it would be that name for any player that has that same ship. And a lot of you guys down below um, really shine some light on that uh, subject. I don't know why, but I was thinking that... Each ship was one of its one of a kind, and now I know that it was really stupid of me to think that. But uh, I really thank you guys so much for shedding some light on the subject and correcting me. Well, we all know that when you start in a game, you pretty much you start with a life pod ship. So you're gonna have to have that um, when you're flying around the planet and getting your first uh, resources, and in turn getting your first units. So you can buy your first real ship. If your ship gets destroyed, you get to, uh, you respawn into the life pod ship and you pretty much have to start over from, you know, buying another ship or something like that. But, um, a long time ago, I did show a picture of what I believe is the life pod ship and you could see it there on the screen and it's just a simple design has uh, rails for landing. There's no like feet that pop out of the bottom or anything like that. And it's different than anything that, that we've ever seen as far as the ships go. Uh, and it definitely stands out to me and it does look generic and it does look like the really crappy ship that Sean says we will start out with. But the life pod ship that you start off with, it, it can go into space and you could go to other planets within that solar system, but you cannot leave that solar system. Maybe. Maybe you can. Maybe you could take the long way to the next solar system. I don't know. Um, but I do know that the life pod ship does not have a, uh, a hyperdrive in it. What do you think, Bookshelf? Do you think you could take the life pod ship the long way to the next solar system? Well, yeah. Uh, it would take an extremely long amount of time. Well, we do know now that uh, you can go between the solar systems without your warp drive. Um, so yeah, it's definitely possible. Right. I I wouldn't do it, but it is definitely possible. Right. I, I um I you know, with the life pod ship, I don't think that if you tried to leave the solar system that a message would appear saying, No, you can't go this way. Right. Um, that definitely goes against the grain of everything Sean Murray said about No Man's Sky. So I do think it's possible to do that, but I think it's much easier to just mine some resources and uh, sell them and just buy a ship. One of the things that's on the list is you do not get massive ships. You will stay in quite small ones. Now, the definition of small, um, yeah, I guess they're comparing it to like the fleet sized freighter ships that we see in space because some of the trader ships are really massive. They're big compared to the fighters. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the cockpit and imagine your character sitting in that cockpit, there's some pretty big ships out there to be, you know, to, to buy. And you could buy ships that are docked at space stations, or if you see one flying around, you could follow it back and wait until it does dock into a space station and then buy it there. You can look at the stats after it lands. You cannot scan it while it's flying to see the stats. I, I don't really like that because I would like to know what I'm, you know, kind of chasing down before I actually go after it. Right. I mean, like if I, I, it's one thing to like the looks of it, but if you don't know what the ship actually has to offer before you go chasing it, then it might not even be worth it. 
Right, you could be following this really cool looking ship for like 30 minutes and it finally lands into a space station and then you get out and check the stats on it and it's got a really crappy hyperdrive, it's got a crappy hull storage, you know, but it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, one of the things that uh, we are guilty of in the No Man's Sky community is wanting everything when it comes to No Man's Sky, you know? I mean, they're already giving us so much that we keep asking more for this and more of that and more of this. And I think we just need to, um, and maybe some of it is possible, you know, maybe they just uh, need to hear our feedback and either hear videos like this or like other people's No Man's Sky videos or to tweet Sean Murray himself on his Twitter. You know, one of the things in the Game Informer um, that he said is that um, NPCs he really doesn't feel like is needed in the game and my opinion might differ from everybody else's but I feel that there does not need to be a shop owner you know I'm fine with the kiosk you know but I would like to see aliens getting out of their spaceship when they land at a trade station to stretch right. and they kind of look over at you and then they look back, you know, like uh, they don't like you because you're not their alien race or whatever. Um, you don't have to talk to them. You know, I mean, they don't need to be able to speak to us, you know, just like the AI that's in Grand Theft Auto 5 or 4. We really don't go around talking to them like in Skyrim. I think yeah. Skyrim's a bad example about how NPCs should work in No Man's Sky. But yeah. he also said, I don't know. It would be easy for us to do that but we don't have any feedback on the NPCs. So the important thing to look at here is that Sean Murray's not getting enough feedback on the game. And he's he's open to a lot of stuff. You know, he's, he's open to maybe even stealing ships. He said he's considering it, but he doesn't want the game to turn into about stealing ships. Mm -hmm. So um, I think feedback is very important. I think the best way to do that is to tweet him some of your ideas and it's a good thing it's only 140 characters because i can imagine the books that we would <laughs> want to tweet <laughs> yeah but simple things you know like if you're if you're concerned about the npc if you you know concerned about uh just a little thing here and a little thing there but you know just the little features that some of you have said in the comments below i would instead of you know don't stop at just commenting them here. Go over to his Twitter and just tweet him. Mm -hmm. Throw your feedback at him. There, as we all know, the three main classes of ships, the fighter, the trader, and explorer. I'm thankful to all of you. Now I realize that there are different prototypes of each and every one of those classes. And with each and every one of those classes, um, you can name that, um, that prototype of ship and anybody who ever finds a ship just like yours will have to fly a ship and it'll be named for them what you decided to name it forever you will get wear and tear on your craft um, and it's you know it'll be clearly visible and it'll help you form an emotional attachment to your ship i think that's a good um a good feature don't you yeah i do too because then uh in most games once you crash your ship you're like oh well i guess i'll just have to go get a new one but then, like, in No Man's Sky, if you crash your ship, it's like, oh man, it, you, you kind of get that, you kind of get that moment of, um, it's, it's almost like a, a sadness. Well, now that's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to have to go get a new one and all, it, all the stuff that I did with this ship is now gone. Right. Well, well the memories are gone. All this, like all the wear and tear that I've picked up along my journeys. Yeah. I... I love the whole rust buildup thing. I mean, just a lot of games don't do that. You know, a lot of games make you look like you're in a shiny ship. You know, it's all new looking. But the you know, the reality of that is, you're in a universe. You're going onto planets. You're coming through the the stratosphere. You know, the atmosphere, whatever. You know, and there's a lot of damage happening to the ship. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about No Man's Sky is it's going to show that. It's going to show the age. It's going to show the wear and tear on your ship. And I think that is really cool. Now, landing, it says, you know, landing will be simple and straightforward. Okay, so your hyperdrive fuel and your cargo space share the same storage. So while it might be good to take resources to another system to sell more, uh, to sell it for more, 
uh, you'd have to take, you'd have to figure out whether it's worth it. You know, do you have enough hyperdrive to get there? Um, do you, uh, you know, you might have to drop some of those resources in, in order, you know, you're going to have to make those decisions, you know, about um, dropping some of the resources to make sure you have enough hyperdrive to get to the next system. Or you could be greedy and just fill it up as much as you can and then take a three month journey to the next solar system. <laughs> I'd only do that if I had like a surplus of a of like a really rare material or something. Yeah, but imagine or, if it did. Like imagine if yeah. it was like worth tons, you know? You probably would make that long journey. In ship combat, different weapons have different specialties. Lasers specialize in melting shields, while plasma projectiles do heavy damage to ship hulls. Torpedoes pack a punch, but not as fast as others. There's no ammo to worry about, but you do need to keep an eye on the cooldowns. And I like uh, that, that there's no ammo to worry about. Yeah, me too, because um, it's it's really something that in a lot of games, I know in Grand Theft Auto, like you, you save up all this money and then then you realize at the end of it that you're out of ammo and you're like well so then you go and buy ammo and all that money that you just saved up you just wasted it on something that you're just going to fire into a, another person's head <laughs> right and you know this part you know that there's no ammo to worry about you just have to worry about the cooldowns um that says a lot about the game that i don't think people really realize you know i think that there's a lot i mean a lot of combat in this game and with all the mining and, you know, trading that we're going to have to do for our hyperdrive and for money, um, adding in the fact that we would have to ref refill our weapons would probably make it almost impossible to play this game. Because that would be just another chore we would constantly have to keep filling. And especially if you ran out of ammo in the middle of combat and then your ship got shot down because, like, if you think about that, since you would respawn in your little life pod ship yeah that that would be even more aggravating because you couldn't do anything about it at the time right yeah it does say a lot about the the combat in this game so anybody that's worried about not having a whole lot of combat there's there's going to be plenty so much of it so that they don't want to um that they're going to give you infinite ammo combat with space whales yeah there you go <laughs> I wonder what kind of guardian robot would uh, be floating around in space if we started shooting those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious to see the uh, the Death Star type space stations that he mentioned. Yeah, me too. Um, That'd be really cool. And that makes me wonder. I wonder if he's going to throw in some Easter eggs. You know, I mean, I know it's all procedurally generated, but there's also content in the game that is not procedurally generated, such as the multi-tool, the guardian robots, um, the drones that we see flying around, you know, stuff like that's not procedurally generated. So he could put Easter eggs in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like huge ones, like we're going to come across to earth or something like that. But uh, I could see some little tiny hints of Easter eggs, mm -hmm. but definitely, we definitely have seen uh, a lot of Sean Murray's outside interest, um, affect what No Man's Sky looks like. If you watch the movie Oblivion and take a look at the, the base, look at the base that they're situated on, and then look at the trading uh, station in one of the trailers, in the in the in one of the newest trailers, it looks almost identical. Mm -hmm. And then also in that movie, they have drones. If you take a look at the drones and then look at the No Man's Sky drones, the No Man's Sky drones are a bit smaller, but the drones look very similar. Yeah, they do. So if you guys haven't seen the movie Oblivion, um, it's a pretty good movie. It's a little slow to watch, but um, if you like space movies like sci-fi, you'll you'll like it. Um, okay, so if you die in your ship, you're just pretty much going to lose the ship and cargo and have to save up for a new one before you can leave that current system. But you don't lose any money or any upgrades to your suit or to your uh, multi-tool. Um, you'll you'll just end up in a basic life pod, as we said before, and you'll have to go to the nearby space station to buy another ship. And if you don't have any money, or units is what they're calling them, you're just going to have to go down to the planet with your life pod ship and start mining. And mining, I believe, is going to be a lot cooler than we actually think, because he did say that there's going to be, um, you can deform the land. So I think that we're going to have a lot of blowing up the land just to get to resources. 
Yeah. I don't think, well, I, there probably won't be a lot of it, but I, I definitely know that it's, it's in the game. It is part of the feature of mining. Right. I'm not sure if it encompasses the entire process of mining, but uh, it's definitely in there. Yep. And then it goes on to say in this confirmed list that if you lose your ship uh, near the center of the galaxy, you can still bounce back from that. It'll just take some time. So I wonder why it'll take more time in the center of the galaxy to bounce back from losing your ship than it would on the outside. Ships are just more expensive. Hmm. Because he said as you get towards the center, things better get ships. better. There's better ships, and better ships are going to be more expensive. Very true. I wonder if it'll be more dangerous, too. Yeah, I. it should be. And as we mentioned before, right now you cannot currently steal ships. Now, I said currently uh, because he is actually contemplating that idea. He knows that a lot of people want it. Um, and I think stealing ships could work without it without it turning into a game of stealing ships. You could be wanted in that solar system very aggressively for stealing ships. And you could be wanted for the entire time you're flying that ship within that solar system or within the next 10 solar systems. So I think, I think it's a cool feature to add stealing ships. But I also think that uh, in order to make it work, you'd have to put a big... A big consequence to stealing a ship. Yeah, I I feel the same way about that. It's really there. There's ways to do it. But imagine so. you you're you're approaching a trade station after you know with your stolen ship, and those drones that are you know you see flying around, they just turn around and just start attacking you. You know, it's like you're not welcome at a trade station. Or so. uh, maybe if you're in like a stolen ship, then uh, the drones scan you. You gotta avoid being scanned because then they'll yeah they'll pick up that you're in a stolen ship yeah and then one of the consequences is it's really hard for you to trade or make any money yep so you <clears throat> might have to just leave that solar system altogether and um if you don't have enough hyperdrive you're pretty much you're in trouble so I, i'd like to see it i mean i can see sean murray's you know point about it you know it would kind of ruin the game because why mine for all that money if you don't have to buy a ship. Out of the three classes, Trader, Fighter, and Explorer, we've all seen very um, very good representations of those. And in the game, it's not going to say it's a Trader or a Fighter or an Explorer, but it's going to have features that it can do that will give it that, um, that thought of that's hey that's what this is for this is definitely a traitor like how big the hull is or right this so is a fighter but out of those three classes which one are you uh i'd say uh you know i i really think that i would be somewhere between a traitor and a fighter a traitor and because, a fighter yeah I, if I could find a ship that's kind of a balance between those two. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the traders because they're big. You know, there's a lot of ship to those. And I like the, you know, I like I like to fight. I love combat. But at the same time, the Explorer ships, they have the better hyperdrive. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're trying to cross that first galaxy to get to your friend, having a, an Explorer would probably be the best one because you could hyperdrive the furthest yeah so actually i i do take that back i i like the idea of the agility and the weapons of the fighter but i i think that the explorer it really is my best bet yeah go ahead and comment uh go ahead and comment down below what what you guys think you would be are you going to be a trader a fighter an explorer what type of ship you know it, it you know says you and if you're a mixture of the two or you just can't make up your mind, you know, that's, you're going to be in the same boat as me and Bookshelf. I, I think that we're not really going to know which ship fits us until we're actually playing the game. Makes me wonder how often are you going to be buying a ship? Like me, I might see one and be like, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to get that ship. And then I might see another one the next day. I'm like, oh, that one's much cooler. I'm going to get that ship. And then I might see one the next day and be like, man, I didn't, why didn't I see that yesterday? I'm going to buy that ship. <laughs> it's just it's gonna be like a, you're a kid in a candy store and you have you have the option to be able to get that, that you shit. know I think 
I think that I'm going to be buying ships quite often as well, except not for the same reason. Why? I'm not the best pilot. Oh, I don't think you have to worry <laughs> No Man's Sky, though. It's... It's not going to be like Elite or Grand Theft Auto when you're flying the helicopter and, you know, GTA 4. Um, it's going to be kind of easy, I guess, to fly. So, you know, it does say that the the ships are going to, like the wings are going to affect the way it flies. So I guess there there's going to be a big difference. And I'm really hoping for a tiny learning curve on the ships just because I like that kind of thing. But for the most part, I think that it's it's going to be really straightforward flying. One of the biggest reasons why I wanted to do this episode is because the ships is what has me the most excited about No Man's Sky. Not to mention, you know, the planets, the whole universe, every galaxy, everything else. But the ships, you know, you're going to be spending the most of your time in your ship. So don't forget to uh, say down below whether you are a fighter, explorer, or trader type in No Man's Sky. As always, you guys know that I love you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate everything you do when you come and you view the videos and you you guys are awesome. I will be doing the podcast this week, so don't forget to add me on Skype. The link is down or the name is down below. Until next time.